All right, everybody, we're back with more questions for the guys. As always, email us at askus at traptalkpodcast.com. And the next question is coming in from Bud. Bud says, hi, guys, love the podcast. My question is about flinching, causes, and remedies. Thank you very much, Bud. Well, flinching, it can be a multitude of things. But what I see a lot of is vision flinching, not seeing the target. Or not ready, you know, that I, I see that so much in people where they're holding the gun up so high, they're waiting on the target, and then it doesn't come that oh, oh they you know they they mm. jerk at the target. So my always thought is get the gun down a little lower so you see the target. It doesn't have to be on the house like I am or like Zach is, but get it down to where you can see the target in a timely manner and you're not moving. That's the other thing. A lot of people are moving on the calls, which I did a lot of it in Tucson for some reason, uh, was moving quite a bit. Um, that can cause you to flinch at a target. So, you know, remedies of it is just get the gun lower and really focus. Get your eyes checked. I mean, I've, I've had a student, a couple students actually in the past here recently that had eye issues. They were like, I don't know what's going on. I'm flinching. It's, you know, I, I didn't do this. They went and got their eyes checked and their prescription had mm-hmm. changed quite a bit. And right. so they got him, you know, new, new lenses, boom, the, the flinchy went away. So it, it could be a multitude of things, you know. But- yeah, I, I agree with Rick a hundred percent there. I think the two primary flinching that, that I see is one vision, like he just mentioned, and two at some point recoil. So yes. I will say this, you know, if you've shot your whole life, at some point in time, most people will agree that there's an expiration on your pull button, right? Now, maybe it's 700,000 or a million or 200,000 or whatever it is. And there's some people that it never expires. For whatever reason, they never have an issue with it, and that's fine. But I do know of some people that after a certain amount of rounds in their career, for whatever reason, mentally, they just couldn't pull that trigger anymore, and they had to go to a release. And I think if you're in that bucket – then it's time to start considering that release. And that is what that is. I think that that's not as common as the other. The other would be the the visual. And when we talk about the visual, I think Rick touched on point number one, where you're not seeing the target well, and that's going to cause. But I want to touch on point number two. If for whatever reason you ever get your eyes too far below the rib, where you're no longer able to see with your primary dominant eye, that's going to cause left eye takeover or whatever eye takeover is the opposite eye. It's also going to cause that flinch. And I know because this happened to me a few years ago, as my body was changing, I didn't change my comb. I got behind the gun and like when I mounted it normal, it looked like I was figure eight. But then as I pressed to a target and I pressed my head down, going to a board, keeping my head on the stock, I was losing the iris of my eye behind the rib. And when that happened, it was causing me to pop my head up and it was causing me to flinch because I no longer had vision of the target. Mentally, if you lose sight of the bird, the brain's going to say, oh crap, what's going on? How do I see the bird? And it's going to do everything in its power to get all the things out of your eyes and out of your way so that you could see a target. So I think check your gun fit, right? Go down to Winnig and get that taken care of. Make sure you're looking above the gun properly. Okay, that's step one. Plug. Step, step, shameless plug. And, and plug. now, that being said, <laughs> you've, you've also got to make sure that you're not cutting that target off too early in the process. So for me, let's just say I'm on post five and I get a hard right on post five and singles. If I see that it's going that direction and I throw the gun out in front of the target in no man's land where I call it, where I can no longer see the target anymore because I'm blocking it out with the barrel and the gun, that's where I'll tend to flinch because I've now lost sight of the bird because I've blotted out and I can no longer see it. Now, in that zone, you have two choices. If you can control yourself and you can continue to move in the direction that the target's going and shoot, you you very well could hit it. But most people don't have that control. And what happens is, is they usually stop their hands and they lift their head or they flinch. So as soon as you lose sight of the bird, I think that's where that flinch happens. And it doesn't necessarily have to be right off the house where, you know, wherever I'm holding, it could be just because the target was above, but then I threw the gun ahead of it. And whenever you throw that gun ahead, 
it's going to cause you to do things that you don't want to do. That's why I'm only closing that spot off at the very second that I'm trying to shoot the target, right? Right when I'm pulling the trigger is when that target's disappearing and I'm shooting it. The, the gun movement to the target and to go in what you're talking about, Zach, with, with the gun fit, that's the one of the biggest things that I run into with multiple students down in, in Tucson and Vegas was making sure that they're seeing a figure eight. Or I had a few of them that really wanted some space in their beats. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. No problem. But it's when you're wanting to see just the back beat. I've had a few students that are like, no, that's what I want to see. Well, then as they're shooting and I'll let them shoot that way. And then all of a sudden they, yeah, right. like, what was that from? And I'm like, because of your setup, you your shot, shot you were behind the gun. I raised the comb up, put a washer in there, whatever it might be, a 16th, an eighth or mm -hmm. whatever. Put it in there, get their eyes up, their their heads up. They're like, oh, well, this is kind of weird. I'm like, you're not going to flinch. But yeah. now going, going to Zach, what you talked about, recoil. So that's one of the things that people I see a lot of times is people are pulling and they're, they're doing this. Well, yeah. that also goes to gun fit. You don't right. have recoil if the gun fits you. If the gun right. fits you correctly, you don't need any of these, you know, um, recoil devices if the gun is fit to you correctly and if that doesn't work just eat some more chicken fried steaks <laughs> absorb more recoil we, can yeah. absorb, we, are, we are primarily designed recoil absorbing machines based on yeah. our uh, yeah. specimen yeah. level physique yeah. yeah. that should come with a disclaimer seriously yeah. is you want to make sure the number one thing is your gun fit number yeah. one if your gun's fitting you and you can see everything good, you know, yeah. and if you're still flinching, then it then you got a, a metal block upstairs that right. is telling you not to shoot. That's when you, you know, with the pull trigger, that's when you go to the release. Yeah. And if that don't work, like then as, pray. Yeah. Just use Jesus. Yeah, as soon as you're as soon as you can't see the bird or you can't see the bead and you don't know where the gun is at, it seems like the head wants to fly off the gun, right? That's the first thing that happens. And I was, uh, so we have Wednesday night league here in, in Vegas at the Clark County shooting complex. And I was, you know, it's a lot of new shooters that shoot league. It's a great entry point into shooting, uh, especially with the ATA. And you just see a lot of horrible gun fit. And, and guys, you know, and shooters out there are thinking, well, I, you know, I, I saw the bird, I moved to the bird, it just didn't break. And I think a lot of that, like you said, is, is gun fit. So if, check if your gun that, fit. If Don't, that you know. barrel pattern is behind the iris of your eye and it's blocking your vision, I mean, if that's what I'm seeing, well, then that's a problem. I need to be in a position yeah. where that rib is below the eye so that I can see over the top of it. And you have to be right. over the top of that line and at least there, right? Now, a lot of people yeah, talk yeah. about, putting washers in for raising point of impact, this type of thing. I really think that there's not a lot happening point of impact wise when you're moving the back up and down. I think that's literally so that you could see differently, right? I think that, mm. you know, the difference you're, between a 16th and a You're going to get a little change. A, a, a little bit, but it's, you know, at, at 30 yards, I mean, Bobby used to tell me, he said at 30 yards, one sixteenth washer isn't going to do anything to that pattern more than, you know, maybe an inch of movement at that distance, but every gun but allows you to see better. But yeah. it's going to allow you to see differently. Every gun's yeah. different on how that is. So, and everybody shoots different that way. But yeah, I just recommend getting a, a true figure eight, be able to see that target, keeping that gun down so you can always see mm -hmm. it, drive through that target. You won't have any problems. Just trust awesome. yourself. That's one yeah. of the main things. And, and don't be scared to try those different hold points, look points, Absolutely. to see if it slows the bird down for you. I think some of us get stuck into, nope, this is where I have to hold the gun and, and, and it's not working, but they're not trying new stuff. Hey, if you're in practice, don't try to put up a score. Just try different stuff at practice, you know, because right. um, when Ricky comes in to help you, he's going to go, hey, try this. And you're like, oh, maybe I could have thought of that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> post five all right uh sorry okay thank you bud we appreciate the question um keep sending them in as always guys ask us at traptalkpodcast.com and we'll get these two guys to answer your questions for you thank you very much